The Delta House are on double secret probation in Animal House. Released in 1978 and directed by John Landis, Animal House tells the story of the drunkenly mischievous and out of control Delta Frat House, a college house full of drinking, partying and all manner of outrageous behaviour. The college's sinister Dean Wormer and the equally sinister militant frat house Omega conspire to finally get the Delta House removed from their college. However, the Delta House rises to stand up against the bullies and higher order that are trying to shut them down in the most unforgettable and oddball ways. In this classic raunchy comedy that showcased the comedic talents of John Belushi on the big screen. Here I have an old VHS copy of Animal House, which I got several years ago at an antique store when I visited Hill Valley. So today we are going to celebrate Animal House by looking into 10 amazing facts that you didn't even know! Let's check it out. Don't you have any respect for yourself? This is absolutely gross. That boy is a P.I.G. pig. See if you can guess what I am now. <laughs> I'm a zit. Get it? Number 10 from Magazine to Movie. Animal House is the first movie to be released under the National Lampoon banner with the company co-producing the movie with Universal Pictures. National Lampoon first started as a satirical magazine, which first began publication in 1970 and satirized political and pop cultural issues of that time. The rebellious magazine hit a nerve with young people and was a hit with college students. That could have something to do with the fact that most of the writers who wrote for the magazine were recent college graduates themselves such as co-founder, writer, and editor of the magazine, Doug Kenny. Not to mention the magazine showcased other writers like John Hughes. A lot of the stories featured in the magazines were based on the writer's own crazy experiences in college fraternities. In 1973, a book was published called National Lampoon's High School Yearbook, which is presented as a yearbook but really is played for laughs. And the book was somewhat the starting point for Animal House with it featuring the characters Vernon Wormer, Pepperidge, and Kroger, all of whom would feature in the movie. But one uprising filmmaker was thinking of taking National Lampoons from magazine to movies. Number nine, from Cronenberg to college. Ivan Reitman was an uprising filmmaker, and before he would embark in the world of crazy and wild college antics, he worked in the world of horror, as in 1975 he produced David Cronenberg's body horror Shivers, also known as They Came From Within. After working on the movie, he then put together a National Lampoon stage show in New York, which featured a pre-Saturday Night Live John Belushi, who would also go on to star in Animal House. Reitman then contacted National Lampoon's editor, Matty Simmons, about the possibility of making a series of National Lampoon-themed movies, and thus National Lampoon started its journey as a movie production company. As well as Animal House, the company would go on to produce other classics like Class Reunion, Vacation, Europe Vacation, Christmas Vacation, Loaded Weapon 1, Van Wilder, and many more. But the big question is just who on earth could they get to write the movie? Just who could be that wacky and crazy? Egon! Yeah, that's right, the great Harold Ramis. Number 8. The original script was going to be. uh. let's just say something else. Harold Ramis and his awesome 70s hair came on board to write the first National Lampoon's movie. Ramis was a former substitute teacher turned joke editor for Playboy magazine. Wow, what a career switch. Where he ended up working for the National Lampoon's radio show, which also included a young Bill Murray. Ramis teamed up with Douglas Kenny, where they wrote their first draft, which was called Laser or Girls. 
which was about Charles Manson in high school. Yeah, Manson, the high school days. And I'm not joking either. But needless to say, the script was rejected. So the two writers, along with fellow Lampoon's writer, Chris Miller, brainstormed some ideas. They reflected on their college days, including the crazy parties, the misbehaving, and the road trips. And they decided to focus the script on that, their own college experiences. It was then decided to set the movie in 1963, at the time of JFK's assassination, as the writers felt that that period was the last days of American innocence, when the clean and pristine 1950s evolved into the 1960s. And thus, Animal House had started to take shape. Number seven, alternative cast choices and director. Ivan Reitman himself wanted to direct Animal House, but the only movie he directed before that was a low-budget independent movie called Cannibal Girls, so it was felt that he didn't quite have the credentials for a big studio movie yet. Incidentally, Richard Lester, who directed several Beatles and Superman movies, was offered the director's seat, but it was John Landis who got the job thanks to directing Kentucky Fried Movie the previous year. Landis brought his crazy manic energy to the movie, and he seems to be the perfect director for Animal House. It was agreed straight away that John Belushi should star in the movie as Bluto, and every scene he is in, he totally steals the movie, and he definitely has the funniest moments. I give... Sorry. Had Belushi turned the role down, then Meatloaf was on standby to take his place, but of course that didn't happen. Chevy Chase was considered for Otto, but the role went to Tim Matheson. Bill Murray was considered for Boone, but that role went to Peter Regert, who I've always known as the detective from The Mask. And Dan Aykroyd was considered for D-Day, but the part went to Bruce McGill. With the exception of Belushi, who was already famous at the time thanks to Saturday Night Live, Landis mainly wanted unknowns in the roles. The movie also introduced Karen Allen as Katie and a very young Kevin Bacon as Chip, as well as Amadeus star Tom Holsey as Pinto and Stephen First as Flounder. <laughs> However, Universal Pictures weren't entirely satisfied with the cast. They wanted at least one big mainstream actor attached to the movie. Number six, the project happened thanks to Donald Sutherland. Universal were hesitant to greenlight Animal House because they felt the movie needed a marketable actor whose presence alone was bound to assure cinema tickets being sold. So Landis turned to Donald Sutherland to star in the movie as the hippie smoking history professor, Dave Jennings. Now the idea of Sutherland starring in an outrageous oddball comedy would have seemed insane at the time as during the 70s, he was a well-known serious actor starring in dramatic movies like Don't Look Now and The Eagle Has Landed. I'm not joking. This is my job. Landis, however, previously worked with Sutherland on Kelly's Heroes, and when he offered him $20,000 to star in the movie, naturally, he said no. Universal then intervened and offered him $25,000 and 2% of the movie's gross earnings, and thus Sutherland agreed, and all his scenes were just shot in a mere two days. And because the movie became the surprise hit that it was, he actually became the highest paid actor to appear in the movie. Yep, thanks to his 2% shares, he even made more than Belushi. Not bad for just two days work. <laughs> Number five, filming location. The production had another big problem. No college campus would let them film on their grounds, which I guess I can sort of understand. They tried several colleges until the University of Missouri agreed to let the crew film there. That is until the president of the university read the script and said, oh no, you don't, not wanting such a raunchy film to be shot on the campus. We're going to grab the bull by the balls and kick those punks off campus. The doors were then closed. Finally, the University of Oregon let the crew film on their grounds, simply because the dean of the college was previously asked by the production of The Graduate if some scenes for that film could be shot there, and he said no. And after The Graduate was a huge hit, he decided not to pass up an offer from Hollywood again. Then as of this moment, they're on double secret probation. There were, however, a few tensions on set. 
Mark Metcalf, who played the villainous Omega Drill Sergeant Niedermeyer, claimed that the cast of actors who played the Deltas, aka the good guys, didn't really have anything to do with the actors who played the Omegas behind the scenes while filming. That, and he felt like the actors looked upon him as a villain, even when the cameras weren't filming. However, tensions came to full blows one night when the cast attended a frat party at one of the college dorms. On the DVD release of Animal House, there is a documentary where several cast members explain that during the shoot, they went to a real actual college party on the grounds, to which they were treated very hostile by the students. And when the actors tried to leave the party, some name calling took place which led to an all out brawl between actors and students. Sadly, the Delta House is no longer there. Now instead, it's a foot and ankle clinic. Yep, it's gone from beer breeze to feet cheese. There is, however, a plaque there to monument the fact that this is where Animal House was filmed. Yeah, it's pretty depressing. The kind of thing that'll no doubt make Bluto drink himself stupid. By the way, contrary to popular belief, that wasn't actual whiskey that John Belushi sculled down in one gulp, but it was actually iced tea. However, there is no doubt in my mind that Belushi could have actually clugged down a bottle of whiskey like that. Ah, thanks. I needed that. Number four, Music of Animal House. John Landis approached musician Elmer Bernstein to compose Animal House. However, Universal Pictures were worried because they didn't think his type of music would fit with a balls to the wall comedy as Bernstein was more well known for scoring serious epic movies like The Ten Commandments, The Magnificent Seven and To Kill a Mockingbird. Heck, the guy even scored the National Geographic theme. So the idea of going from grand and epic to goofball laughs seemed like a far stretch. Bernstein composed Animal House as Landis was childhood friends with his son. And the genius thing about Bernstein's score is that it is serious in tone. It has layers of sophistication and class. And hearing that on screen with the insane imagery going with it is itself really funny. And thus Universal also saw the funny side of this and were happy. And Bernstein would go on to score more lighthearted movies afterwards like Ghostbusters and the Blues Brothers. Speaking of music, Mark Netcalf, who as mentioned played Niedermeyer, would go on to star in several Twisted Sister music videos, including I Wanna Rock and We're Not Gonna Take It, where he reprises his role of Niedermeyer. He turns up as both an abusive parent and an abusive teacher. And if you want further proof he's playing Niedermeyer, they even recycle the pledge pin line. It's a pledge pin, sir. A pledge pin on your uniform! A Twisted Sister pin? On your uniform! However, I've got the feeling that these two Twisted Sister music videos aren't the only sequels to Animal House. Number three, TV series. Yep, in 1979, the following year after the release of Animal House, ABC aired a spin-off TV series called Delta House. Now, firstly, what's interesting is the series actually features some of the cast who are in the movie such as Stephen First as Flounder, Bruce McGill as D-Day, James Widows who played Hoover, and John Vernon who played Dean Wormer. But that's it, the rest of the cast was replaced. Sadly, unlike the movie which relished in its outrageous behavior, the TV series was stuck by the more stricter confines of television. So Delta House was really a diet soda, watered down version of Animal House, going for a more slapstick approach. And, well, I guess that just didn't wash down well with fans of the movie, who missed the rude humour, and thus the show only lasted for one season. The show also featured a very young Michelle Pfeiffer, who admitted to starring in the show just to get some work and exposure, and would go on to call the scripts of the show terrible. I mean, come on, surely it can't have been as bad as Grace 2. Number 2, Alternative Title. The theatrical poster of Animal House featured this wacky cartoon illustration, which I actually really love, as it delivers the spirit of the movie and has become iconic, inspiring other movie posters like Grandma's Boy and the National Lampoon's documentary movie. Some alternative posters just used a photo of the cast, which to be honest, I also really like. These two rare posters show a can of beer being thrown at photos of the Delta House fraternity. I get where they're going with this, trying to show the true party nature of the movie. 
Then there is this re-release poster, which I'm guessing is a re-release poster as it declares, guess who's back? The first thing I notice is the roll down Bluto's pants, because my mind always thinks it looks like a tail. The Spanish poster is just weird. I mean, what's going on with Belushi's face? And this French poster is even weirder. But as you can see, in France, the movie was called American College, which I get as it's a college in America. But for whatever reason, I guess the French just weren't having a bar of calling the movie Animal House, so American College it was. Number one, Animal Reception. Animal House was released in July 1978 and was a massive success in the box office, making over $141 million on a $3 million budget, making it a massively profitable movie. The film critics weren't on board with the movie and didn't quite know what to make of it. Well? Well? Out with it! However, it really hit a chord with young people who couldn't get enough of it. The movie really resonated with them and it was talking to them. It had the rebellious streak that appealed to a lot of people of the high school and college age. There was a sequel plan that was going to be set during the hippie era of the 1960s, which was apparently going to be called The Summer of Love, and it was going to revolve around the Delta House reunion for Pinto's wedding. However, Universal got cold feet after the American Graffiti sequel did poorly and the sad passing of Belushi in 1982 pretty much sealed the deal that there would be no sequel. But regardless, there will always be that crazy summer of 1978 when the Delta House had a toga party and stood tall against those who tried to get in their way and stop them in the most brilliant, funniest fashion imaginable. Yeah, I actually really, really love Animal House. It's always been a movie that cheers me up and makes me smile whenever I'm down. There are generally tons of scenes in this movie that tugs at my LOL bone. So if you're in search of a good laugh and aren't too easily offended, then check it out. But yeah, just remember there are a few jokes that are a bit... by today's standards. Anyway, I'm Minty. And I'm on double secret, secret probation. See ya. Secret probation.